Today we're out here doing some heavy lifting on F5. Out here on the farm, we've got closed canopy forest. And our first step in the habitat management plan is really opening this forest up, let the sun hit the ground, put in our food plots, put in our bedding thickets and get our road system all built so that we can actually hunt this thing effectively. We can actually drive some wildlife activity out here and get them to do kind of what we want by steering them in the right direction. I know that it's intimidating. When you start thinking about getting out and doing clear cuts on your land, uh, you know, if you're thinking that you've got to do that with a chainsaw and your buddies, uh, that, that is overwhelming for sure because uh, it would take 12, 15 years of, uh, you know, after work hours type labor on a property to get, you know, 10% clear cuts out here. So that's what we did. We've got 50 acres. We did about six acres of clear cutting between food plots, bedding thickets and road system and I couldn't wrap my head around doing that by hand. So you don't have to is the short answer. So what we decided we wanted to do was we brought in some timber companies and basically just showed them the plan, uh, showed them what we had in mind, and then got bids from these guys. Our project was small enough at six acres that there wasn't value. We're not getting a paycheck by having them in here and cutting this timber for us, but they are gonna cover all the labor and just trade us straight up for the lumber. And so while on the front end, it's intimidating and you're thinking you might have years of labor, once you look into this a little bit, once you learn uh, that the timber companies actually really need lumber, uh, you'll find out that you can probably get the job done free, or if you've got a big enough job, you might even get paid for it, depending on what the, the actual tree species are on your property. So if you're gonna bring a timber company in, there are a bunch of lessons that I've learned because I've done this a few times now. And the first lesson really is you've got to mark out what you want cut really well. Because these guys, uh, they're trying to be as efficient as possible. They're running heavy equipment and they are flying. And if you don't mark it well, they're going to get outside the lines and you're not going to get what you want. And so the first time I ever had a timber company come out, uh, the clear cuts weren't the same shape that I wanted. They weren't the same size that I wanted. And it wasn't their fault. It was my fault. And so this time around on this 50 acre piece of property that we're working on here, I made sure that I had bright ribbons every 10 or 15 feet high enough so they could see them when they were in their big equipment. And then it's easy for them to stay within the lines. They don't wanna go outside the lines either. They want you to be happy with the job. And so help them do that by marking the timber cut as best you can. Second, the big lesson I learned is that you've got to project manage these things. This is your project. So if you're going to have a timber company in and you're going to have them work on clear cuts, food plots, bed and thickets, road system, you might want to make sure they're doing what you want them to do, right? Because again, they want to, they want to provide a quality service, but if they don't know that they're not, uh, they're just going to keep on going and they crush. So you bring a crew in to clear some land, they're gonna get a lot of land cleared. And so if you're not visiting that site on a regular basis, uh, you're gonna miss an opportunity to get them to adjust. And so what I found was four or five visits a day just to do a quick review, quick ride through with the wheeler, make sure they were on track was really the right way to do it. And then I could communicate effectively with the crew and make sure that if I needed them to adjust, that was no big deal. The third major lesson is don't get scared when you see that clear cut because it's gonna be scary. You've got beautiful forest and you're gonna come out to it and there's brush everywhere. There's logs, uh, just everything, <laughs> nothing looks right. And it scared me half to death the first time I saw it. Well, don't be scared. It all grows back and this is actually natural, right? So when there are storms and nature they, you know, is gonna take out trees, they're gonna knock trees over, all that understory grows back in, all we're doing is helping to do that. Regenerational forest in the thickets, adding a little bit of thermal cover with some pine trees maybe after the fact. So we're, we're filling in the gaps and it'll grow back. So don't get nervous about it. And if you cut them short because you got nervous and you stop them from doing the job you originally had planned, they're not coming back to do another 50 yards here or 50 yards there because there's no longer an ROI for the second visit. So let them do the job that you had planned on the front end, no matter how nervous you get about it, okay? And you'll be happy camper after it's all said and done. So we got some lessons to live by when you get the timber company coming out to the farm and we've got some rules uh, for project management and not getting scared, letting them do the job at hand. Um, all of that comes after you've developed a really good strategy, okay? So you don't know what to cut unless you know what's going on around the borders of your farm. 
And so for us here, I've got state land, state hunting land on one end of the farm that I border. And so for me, I've got uh, 3,500 acres of closed canopy timber uh, just south of the property. And I've got lots of hunting pressure out there too. And so for us, I'm doing clear cuts on that end of the property that I'm gonna let turn into bedding thickets that are gonna be super, super thick. So that when the pressure kicks up, when the wildlife come running our way, they're gonna feel safe the moment they hit that property line, right? That makes sense. So they're gonna to wanna to come over to our place, which is great. So I'm gonna take advantage of what's going on outside of our property lines, use that pressure to our advantage to get wildlife to come to the farm. And then uh, we've got a lot of things here for them to wanna to stick around, okay? So then on the other end of the property, we've got our food plots. We've got three different food plots, three different food sources, and they're all on the opposite end of the farm is all that pressure. And because of that, they're going to feel totally comfortable. They've got bedding thicket, they've got food plots, we've got water sources right here on the farm. So really we're trying to create a habitat where they don't feel like they need to leave. And uh, we're taking advantage of the pressure that's on the outside of our borders. So if your property's not exactly like mine, which it probably isn't, what you should still be looking at is what's around you, right? If you've got agriculture all the way around you, you got beans and corn, you probably don't wanna plant beans and corn in your food plot. You might wanna do a super solid thicket in there so that that's where all the deer come to bed, right? Or that's where all the wildlife come to hang out. Vice versa, if you've got swamps and a bunch of thickets out there and you've got no egg in your area, well, maybe you wanna do some awesome food plots in the middle of the property that's gonna bring that wildlife in. Really what you're thinking about when you're figuring out the strategy is what isn't around you that's gonna make your property special and uh, how are you gonna hunt it when it gets here? So making sure you have really good access to. So that's it. When you bring Timber Company in, it's not gonna cost you money, it shouldn't, if you've got a few acres or more for them to cut. And it shouldn't be intimidating because again, uh, as long as you've got some strategy and you're thinking about hunting strategy on the front end, thinking about what's outside of your borders on the front end, you should make a good plan and execute that plan. You'll have better habitat and better hunting for.